Hi and welcome to Perimeter of 2D Shapes. Just before we start, we want to just remind you that there is a notes chatter available for this video. Check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so we are looking at the perimeter of 2D shapes today and the word perimeter just means the distance around the outside of a shape. And so what we've got here are some shapes drawn onto um, centimetre squared paper. And so all we need to do here is we just need to think, well, how far have we travelled to get from one point all the way around that shape and back to the start? And so if I look at this side, I've gone up four and then I've gone along six gone down four and along six and i've returned to the starting point so how far have i traveled in total well all i need to do is add those numbers together so four plus six is ten plus four is fourteen plus six is twenty centimeters and so the perimeter of that shape would be twenty centimeters if we look at the square if i started here i would walk up four squares, I go across four squares, down four squares, and across four squares. So how, many, uh, how far have I traveled in total to go around the outside of that shape? Well, I've done four plus four is eight, plus four is 12, plus four is 16 centimeters. Now, if I think about the L shape here, I'm going to begin at this point and all I'm going to do is I'm going to walk all the way around taking into account every single line that I'm traveling along and so if I go up the side I've got eight squares and then along two and then down four and then across six and down four and across eight and so if I add all of those together, I'll be able to get the distance around the entire shape. And so 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 4 is 14, plus 6 is 20, plus 4 is 24, plus the 8 is 32. And so in total, the perimeter of that shape is 32 centimetres. Now we're going to move on to some shapes uh, where they have not been drawn on centimetre square paper. They are not drawn accurately either, but we've been given some information about them in order to find the perimeter. Now the first case is that we have a square. We know it is a square because the height and the width are exactly the same length. They are three centimetres each. Now in terms of a square, one of the pieces of information we know is that a square, all of the sides are the same length and therefore the top must also be three centimetres and the other side must also be three centimetres. And so if I'm going to walk all the way around this shape, I would have to travel three, six, nine, twelve centimetres. And so my perimeter will be twelve centimetres. In terms of a rectangle, the rule about a rectangle is that opposite sides are of equal length. And so with this one, if we know that this side is two centimetres, then the right hand side must also be two centimetres. If we know that the bottom is seven centimetres, then we also know that the top is seven centimetres. And if we are going to walk all the way around that shape and find the perimeter, well, we can do two plus seven is nine, plus two is 11, plus seven is 18. Now with both of those, we could have actually done that in a slightly different way with the information we had right at the very start. What we could have said is, well, we know in the uh, square here that we've got three and three. So if I add those together, three plus three is six. And we know that that is doubled because the other sides match. So six times two is 12. It also works. If we think about the rectangle, well, the two sides I already knew were two and seven. So two plus seven is nine, but we knew that they would be doubled because they matched the other two sides. Nine times two is 18. We get the same response. Finally, we have an isosceles triangle. It's an isosceles triangle because we have two sides which are the same length here. Now, if I were to walk around this shape, I would have to travel five, 10 and 13. I'm simply just adding all of those sides together and so my perimeter is 13 centimetres. 
but we're going to end with what are known as compound shapes shapes made from uh, more than one shape put together and we're going to try and find the perimeter of these given the information that we already have now the key is we must know all of the lengths of all of the sides if we want to find the perimeter and in this case what we've been told is that the base of this shape is eight centimeters but this little piece is three centimeters. Now, if I want to uh, want to find all of the lengths, I also need to know this length. Now, these must all add up. So the three and the gap must be the same as eight centimeters as they are in the same position. And so what is left over? Well, that means we are left with five centimeters uh, for the green length. If we look at the height, the total height of the shape is seven centimeters. And I've already used four centimeters here. So what is left over at this point? Well, that is three centimeters. And therefore, if I want to find the total perimeter, I'm going to have to add together every value that we have. So seven plus three is 10, plus three is 13, plus five is 18, plus four is 22, and plus eight, well, that gives me 30 centimeters in total in terms of this c shape well we need to think about what we can understand from the diagram well this um, is almost like a square or a rectangle we have the fact that the bottom is nine centimeters if the bottom is nine centimeters then the top must also be nine centimeters and down the side we have a four centimeter length a three centimeter and a three centimeter that must match up to this length in total and so four plus three is seven plus three is ten centimeters there is one more piece of information this length of five centimeters it must match this side and so that must also be five centimeters therefore in order to add together all of my sides well in this case i need to do ten plus nine, plus four, plus five, plus three, plus five, plus three, plus nine. And so if I add all of those together, 10 plus nine is 19, plus four is 23, plus five is 28, plus three is 31, 36, 39, 48. And so I have a total perimeter of 48 centimeters. And finally, we come to the exam question. This was from the Edexcel mock papers and it was on paper two. Um, and this is uh, gives us a regular hexagon. There are six identical hexagons. Three of the hexagons are joined to make shape A. The other three hexagons are joined to make shape B. Which shape has the greater perimeter, shape A or shape B? You must show how you get your answer. Now, this question has a lot of elements to it. First of all, we have a regular hexagon. Now, what does it mean to be a regular hexagon? Well, it means that each of these sides is exactly the same length. Now, we haven't been told what that length is. So if we can just treat it as a unit of one, if we just say that each side is one centimeter long, then we can deal with that for the rest of the question. Because then in shape A, what we are dealing with are three shapes put together. Now, there are, you'll notice here that these lines are actually dashed. And the reason is that those uh, two uh, those uh, shapes are pushed together. And therefore, in terms of the actual perimeter, the dashed lines no longer count. And so if I wanted to walk all the way around this shape here, I would have to travel five around the outside of the first shape. The second shape has four and the last shape has five again. And so the total perimeter will be five plus four plus five. It will be 14 centimeters. In shape B, we have three dashed lines in the middle. And so when we are dealing with the perimeter, we're actually just walking around the outside here, four around that shape, four, around this shape and four around this shape. And so my perimeter of the second shape is 12 centimeters. So it asks which of the shapes has the greater perimeter. 
Well, it is shape A.